Jenny, who is um, part of my team, is going to talk about older people and vaccinations. This is part of us being robust and resilient for winter and how important it is. So over to you, Jenny. Thank you. I'll just get my presentation up. Okay, so yeah, as Leslie said, um, and as my colleague, our colleague Sophie mentioned um, earlier in the day, um, we at Age UK um, do a lot of work around vaccinations, and it's a key part of our winter messaging in particular. I'm just going to go into some basics. This might be very obvious to many people on the call, but I think it's important to cover. So why vaccinations are so important for older people is, you know, as we age, our immune systems just don't work as well. This means we're much more susceptible to infection. So older people are more likely to get ill. And on top of that, if and when they do get ill, they're more likely to experience the more severe symptoms. And of course, in some cases that they're for some diseases, infectious diseases, their mortality rate is much higher as well. Um, so vaccinations kind of give that little boost to our immune system to, to stop us getting ill. And also, if we do still get ill, um, can reduce some of those impacts. Um, not all vaccinations will have that kind of same impact. Some will stop us getting the disease um, and some is more about kind of reducing the impact. There are, of course, other benefits too, not just to the individual, but um, particularly in winter, um, we know that the vast majority of people who catch flu, for example, are over 65 and who are then admitted to hospital are over 65. So we... Um, we know how important it can be to kind of reduce that pressure on the healthcare system and also can reduce kind of the wider spread of disease as well. Um, just a quick overview about what is available at the moment. These are the vaccines that are available to pretty much all older people with obviously some age eligibility criteria. There are others such as hepatitis that might be available if you have certain health conditions or you may need some certain um, vaccinations for travel. But the flu vaccine is an annual vaccine. This winter, it's available to people aged 65, unpaid carers, frontline health and social care workers, care home residents, and those with certain health conditions. Um, and that is pretty much the same eligibility criteria for the COVID-19 vaccination boost as well, which um, is also going on this winter. The shingles vaccine is available all year round to those aged 70 to 79 and as of this September um, is also eligible to those who turn 65 um, from September 2023. It will eventually become um, eligible to everyone aged 60 plus, but that won't happen for another couple of years um, as they're just kind of doing it in stages at the moment. And the pneumococcal vaccine, which is also available all year round to those aged 65 plus. This is a bit of where we are for our uptake for this year. So um, for flu vaccination, the WHO, the World Health Organization recommend that um, there should be about 75% uptake. Um, and that at the moment we're at about 68.5% of people age 65 have received their flu vaccination and we're about 61% for the COVID booster. So we're on our way, but we do need to um, get a little bit higher than that. Generally for flu, certainly we see around 70% of uptake, although that has been a little bit higher over the last couple of winters. Um, and if our aim is to certainly, I mean, our aim is for 100%, but certainly if we can get to that recommendation of 75%, that would be great. Um, so pneumococcal, um, is as you only need one dose of the pneumococcal vaccine and that kind of lasts you for a long time, um, we say that the coverage is 71% because 71% of people aged 65 plus are vaccinated as of 2022. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they all got vaccinated in 2022. Um, I haven't put the shingles data up because it's um, the, the age categories have changed quite a lot, not just in this year, and it's much harder to put just one number on it um, and different age groups have quite different uptake rates. For example, last year, 48% of 71 year olds were vaccinated, but and but 82% of 79 year olds were vaccinated. So that there, there is opportunity for catch up over that, that kind of 70 to 79 year age 
bracket. Um, but certainly shingles and pneumococcal, um, there's much less awareness around those two vaccinations um, from older people. And they're a bit harder to get your hands on just because they're not always delivered in pharmacies and things like that, like the flu and COVID um, vaccinations. Just a bit of um, insight into uh, why people may not get a vaccination and there's lots of reasons. Um, most These are the ones I picked out as more specific to older people but they can affect um, kind of everyone and anyone. Um, so physical barriers, just simply not being able to get from A to B. That may be because they're housebound. Um, you may be a carer and not be able to find the time to go to a vaccination. It could be linked to public transport, the location of vaccination centers, capacity in primary care to kind of get out and deliver vaccinations in people's homes. Um, so there's a, a range of reasons in that space, but particularly for older people, you know, if their mobility is not great, um, if they aren't able to drive themselves or they don't have someone to take them, that can be a real barrier just from getting A to B. Information barriers. So, you know, people not having quite the information they need. The age criteria for flu and COVID, for example, has changed quite a lot the last few years. They've gone back and forth to 50. It's now back up to 65. And sometimes that information just doesn't get out to the right people. So if you don't know you're eligible, you may not go and get your vaccine. Um, there is also, of course, a lot of misinformation out there in the world um, that can inform people's decisions. Um, but also not having the information in accessible formats, whether that's or whether all your information is online or it's in a language that you can't understand. Um, all of those are really important factors into driving uptake. Um, but as well as um, written information, I guess, there's also having access to people that can answer your questions and provide you correct information, such as healthcare professionals, pharmacists, scientists, if, uh, if that also floats your boat. And it's not always possible for everyone. Um, confidence, so vaccine confidence, or the opposite, which is often talked about, which is hesitancy. Um, there are lots of reasons why people don't have confidence in vaccines and these differ from country to country, community to community, person to person. Um, there are always ways to build up that confidence and there are also ways to damage that and create hesitancy. So the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent vaccine has really played a role in impacting some of that confidence, sometimes for good and sometimes not. So um, we as a nation overall are quite a vaccine confident nation but there's certainly pockets within that who have less confidence um, so that's something that we know we need to kind of work on to improve uptake and side effects we frequently hear from a lot of older people that the side effects that they get from their vaccines will put them off getting future vaccines um, and I think it's important to acknowledge because it can sometimes actually be dismissed um, you know, people say, oh, you might get mild symptoms, but for some people, they're not mild. And for example, if you're a carer and you're out for, and you're a full-time carer and you are get a vaccine and your side effects kind of stop you being able to care for two days, that's quite a significant impact on someone's life. So being aware of those and um, being less dismissive of what side effects can occur, I think is important, but also acknowledging that the side effects of vaccine are often preferable to catching the disease itself. Um, in terms of what we can do to improve uptake, so as Leslie said time and time again today, one of the themes of today is kind of coming together. And I there's lots of things um, that I could talk about that could improve vaccine uptake, but I want to focus today on what we hear and those that are watching and listening can do to improve uptake specifically. Um, so asking and answering questions. If you are in a position where older people are coming to you um, and you can you ask them whether they've had their vaccinations as a really important way to stay well this winter, for example, or if you're not, if you don't have all the information that you need to answer any questions, where can you go and find those um, answers? Um, but also, um, if you're an older person or a carer, 
and you are unclear about or you have any questions about vaccination, then please do go and ask and make sure that the source of that information is is trusted because um, it's absolutely fine to have questions. Um, but um, that can be the difference sometimes between um, someone taking up a vaccine or not. So if you are a healthcare professional asking someone if they've had their vaccinations um, and if you're an older person asking questions um, if you're unsure. Um, but also providing accurate information. So we've talked about today our Winter Health campaign where vaccination is a key part of that. Um, we provide information to older people and others about vaccination, but it's important that others are doing this too. And I think when we talk about the different contact points that we have with older people, kind of where else can we fit um, other health messaging in, whether that's um, other organisations and people talking about nutrition and hydration, for example, but also where can we also remind people or give information out about vaccinations. Um, I put this in to kind of link it more directly to today, but I think also sometimes someone coming in for their vaccination is the only time they might have seen a healthcare professional that year. And so how can we use that opportunity to spread some of the messages that we've heard today about nutrition and hydration? Or, um, you know, it might be that you haven't seen this person in a year and you've seen them lose a lot of weight in that time. And how can we um, make sure that that person um, has the information they need to continue to stay well as well as get vaccinated? Um, so, yeah, I think that's everything I've got today. And thank you very much for having me. And it's been a really interesting um, day. So thank you very much, everyone, for sharing. I think um, vac being vaccination ready is a really important part of being robust and resilient. Well, that brings us to the end of today. And thank you, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed all the presentations. I think that they were really rich in what was shared. So they'll the presentations will be available very soon on the MTF website and the film presentations will come in a couple of weeks. Do check out the MTF website and if you feel like it, sign up to become a stakeholder and then we can keep you informed of things that are going on, things that are coming up, things of interest, thing, new pieces of research that you might be interested in. So thank you, everybody. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the week. So as you know, we've got a full programme of events. So remind you that um, the MAG has opened the screening survey and the portal can be found on the BAPEM website. Tomorrow is Interactive Tuesday when we're asking people to use the selfies and talk about what they're doing, what they want to share, their challenges, your solutions and your innovations, because of course you have got loads of which we have heard today. Wednesday is about access, and I think this is really important. How are people accessing nutrition? How are we going to get councils to start buying more Meals on Wheels? How are we going to get urgent funding to support the continuation of lunch clubs and all these things that we know are really important to older people for their health and their well-being? And then Thursday, Thursday is sharing your innovations about hydration, which obviously we've done an awful lot today, which has been great. And Robust and Resilient Friday, just thinking how we can help older people to be winter ready because they're already finding life quite difficult. There's a big legacy that's been left by COVID. Some older people are really not over that. And now to have more hardships through the winter, there's a lot of people at risk. And then we're having a weekend celebration of our nutrition heroes. So please identify somebody who needs an extra shout out, somebody who's really gone above and beyond. And, and we'd like to put that on social media. So thank you once again to everybody. We've had a great day. I hope you have.